I don't know what's in the report. I'm looking forward to, to reading it. Uh, so far, I'm puzzled by uh, some of the decisions that the police have taken, and I think the police ought to uh, explain themselves uh, on, on grounds of uh, accountability and transparency. They ought to explain why, for example, Rishi Sunak uh, got a penalty notice for turning up uh, 10 minutes early for a meeting. Um, and why Simon Case, who was the cabinet secretary, who was also at that birthday party, uh, didn't get a penalty notice. Perhaps Sue Gray will, um, w will help to explain that because she might actually give an account of what, what actually happened, uh, when, uh, when Boris Johnson was presented with a birthday cake. I mean, perhaps, you know, perhaps there was a, perhaps they were dancing, they were dancing on the cabinet table or there was a, uh, Marilyn Monroe impersonator jumping out of the cake out of the Tupperware. I don't know. I mean, there's something that's not quite right about what we know so far about that event. Big issue with this whole story is that we seem like we're so familiar with it. It's been plastered on so many pages of various newspapers for the past six months. All of these different events, which we all refer to as parties, although some of them seem more jovial than others, uh, seem to all merge together. I suppose we'll get that moment of clarity, but also perhaps some photographs, which might well be the most important part of the whole saga. Well, will they? I mean, they're not going to change anything because the police have already decided uh, who broke the law and who didn't. And I don't think that Sue Gray can contradict them uh, and say that, you know, certain people should have been fined for other events, uh, certainly not just on the basis of photos. Um, I mean, the, on the on the photos, we've had we've had a bit of spin from number ten uh, this morning, suggesting that uh, they're they're quite happy to have some of the photos published because they'll reveal uh, quite how sober and um, unparty like some of these gatherings were. Um, but no, I mean, we're all looking forward to, to to a jolly good read, but it's not actually going to change anything, I suspect. One of the rows that developed over this weekend, of course, is who called a meeting between the Prime Minister and Sue Gray. Of course, Sue Gray's investigation is supposed to be independent. There's supposed to be no political interference. And of course, I don't think many people are doubting the very uh, great level of respect that everyone has for Sue Gray. Um, and yet there is a bit of confusion over this meeting. Can you help clear it up for us? No. <laughs> well, I can help on the in the sense that I could say it really doesn't matter. I mean, this is what Alistair Gamble used to call processology. Mm. Um, I mean, it just does tend to obsess journalists sometimes. That, you know, it really does. It's not, it's it's irrelevant who called. You know, who who's whose idea the meeting was. Uh, I mean, it's just the fact of the meeting doesn't look great because, as you say, uh, that would be an opportunity for the prime minister to put to to put pressure on Sue Gray. Uh, although I'm sure. I'm sure he wouldn't have done anything quite so crude. And she is perfectly capable of, res of resisting that pressure. And presumably they were, just, they were discussing when the report was going to be published and what kind of report it was going to be, just so that the Prime Minister would know what he was responding to. But, uh, no, I mean, it's, and it's not an independent report in the sense that Sue Gray uh, is inquiring into the behaviour of uh, her colleagues and her boss. Um, so it's never properly independent. But as you say, Everyone has a great deal of respect for Sue Gray and thinks that she will, um, she will reach the conclusions that she intends to reach and uh, will, will not be swayed by straightforward political pressure.